Did you know that as far back as the 1960s, the idea of inflatable space habitats has been floating around? Yes, I said inflatable. Hello guys, I'm Oliver White of Ground Based Space, and today I thought we'd have a look at inflatable space habitats and spacecraft. What they are, how they came to be, and what the future holds for them. So let's check it out. So what is an inflatable space habitat? An inflatable space habitat is an inflatable, life-supporting and pressurised structure or craft. The first design and then manufacture of an inflatable space habitat was actually produced way back in 1961 by NASA and the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company when they produced a toroidal space station design at NASA's Langley Research Centre. The years following this would see a lack of funding plus a lack of confidence in the strength of materials being used in the station design kill off the inflatable space habitat idea for over 20 years. It wasn't until 1989 that a proposal from NASA's Johnson Space Center revived the idea of inflatable space habitats, proposing an inflatable 16 meter in diameter spherical lunar outpost that would be partially buried in the lunar surface. This really interesting concept drawing for the proposed base shows six levels that could support six to 12 crew members at any time though things seemingly never went any further than the proposal. In the latter half of the 1990s, a new concept was being considered as a replacement for the International Space Station's crew habitation module. TransHab would have had an 8.2 metre diameter, nearly double that of the ISS's Columbus crew module, with its 4.4 metre diameter. This didn't get much further, however, as delays and the rising cost of the ISS saw the American government issue a resolution that effectively banned NASA from continuing with any TransHab research and development, though it did allow for the option of leasing an inflatable habitat from a private company. And in walked Bigelow Aerospace. In 2000, American billionaire businessman Robert Bigelow seized the opportunity to buy the sole rights to the patents NASA had for their TransHab project. Over the next 10 years, Bigelow Aerospace would develop the technology, improving the strength of the fabric layers within the inflatable structure. They also designed and developed a small variety of inflatable space vehicles for both crewed and uncrewed missions. In 2006, Bigelow Aerospace launched Genesis 1 from Russia, repeating this again a year later with Genesis 2. Both were unmanned craft put into orbit with various pieces of equipment on board designed to test the viability of inflatable craft. Both Genesis craft actually surpassed expectations and the tests were able to continue for nearly three times as long as had been planned. Genesis 1 and 2 are both still in orbit at the time of recording but are due to burn up on re-entry sometime within the next 18 months. The success of the Genesis vehicles led to NASA again considering the use of inflatable spacecraft in early 2010, with the idea being to connect a Bigelow craft to the ISS for a large variety of testing. In 2012, NASA signed a $17.8 million contract with Bigelow Aerospace to develop the Bigelow Expandable Activity Module, or BEAM. Following a 10-month delay from SpaceX, the launch actually took place on April 8, 2016, on SpaceX's Falcon 9 and CRS-8 mission, arriving at the ISS in a Dragon cargo vessel two days later. On the 16th of April 2016, British astronaut Tim Peake installed BEAM using the robotic arm Canadarm2, and its first attempt at being inflated came a month later on the 26th of May though higher than predicted air pressure levels saw this attempt stopped after just two hours. The teams involved came to the conclusion that the problem had been that the fabric layers within Beam's inflatable structure had stuck together after the 10 month delay of their original launch date. Something no one could have predicted at the time. So a second, this time successful attempt was made on the 28th of May 2016, taking seven hours to fully inflate. A little over a week later, astronaut Jeff Williams and cosmonaut Oleg Skripochka would be the first people to enter BEAM to do tests and install new equipment. 
been performed very well as part of the ISS, with NASA announcing that the module would stay attached to the ISS until at least 2020 as a storage area, with options that would extend its use until 2022. But it again exceeded expectations, so well in fact that in July of 2019 it received another extension that would see the beam module being used on the ISS until 2028. But that's not where this ends, Bigelow Aerospace has some big plans for inflatable space habitats. For the better part of the last two decades they've been working on a larger craft than the current beam module. B330 is the design that has most directly grown from the original NASA TransHab concept. At 330 cubic meters, hence the B330 name, the craft has been designed with many options in mind, including a few commercial space station designs that use several B-330s joined together. A B-330 is due to launch on an Atlas V in 2021, though United Launch Alliance has previously stated that it would be their currently still in development Vulcan performing the launch, so this could be delayed. Also in development at Bigelow Aerospace is the B-330's big brother, the BA-2100 Olympus. The BA-2100 Olympus is a concept design in development as part of Bigelow's commercial space station program. Again, the numerical name is a reference to its size in cubic meters. With the size of the design, it would have to launch on a super heavy launch vehicle like the SLS or even SpaceX's Starship, but once in orbit, the BA-2100 will have two and a half times the space of the International Space Station. Over the last few years, we've also seen the Sierra Nevada Corporation design their own inflatable habitat. They have been developing their LIFE, or Large Inflatable Fabric Environment module, with a view to make it part of a fully SNC-built lunar orbital station. Personally, I'm a big fan of the idea. We've already had it proven to us that they work and I'm excited to see what's to come. There is some worry for Bigelow Aerospace, as the outbreak of COVID-19 in March 2020 saw Bigelow Aerospace drop their entire staff. My hope is that they will take their staff back as soon as this is all over and hopefully get back into developing uh, the modules that they're working on. My concern that is without the staff, they won't recover as a company and we see Bigelow Aerospace fold. Though if that is the case, I am hopeful that one of the bigger space firms sees the potential that I do and takes it on. With the likes of Elon Musk's Mars ambitions, these inflatable vehicles could be the perfect crew modules for stations or even vessels. Only time will tell and I really, really hope that it ends well. So. What do you think on inflatable spacecraft and space habitats? Good idea? Bad idea? Let me know in the comments down below. I would really, really love to see your opinions on this. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Even share it with friends if you liked it enough. I'd love to do more of these longer, informative looks at space technologies and companies, so I would really appreciate any feedback you may have. And on that note, thank you so much for watching, and remember, keep looking up at the stars, because who knows, one day we might just meet each other up there. Take care guys.